Take Row here. So, welcome to the Amiga 500 Plus breakdown party. So, we're now going to strip this down to its uh, basic components and, uh, and generally have a look and see what condition it is in inside. Oh, well, the first thing is to flop it over. And then they have upgraded to um, Torx screws, but I think what we'll do is we'll first take this cover off, and then this cover is missing, so I will, I will order the replacement for that, so when we assemble it again, we can put that back. to keep the screws on and there's a magnetic plate so the screws won't go flying off anywhere and as you see this is unique it actually has the original seal and, um, so yeah theoretically speaking this hasn't been opened before but it could be that it's also a fake. And when, when I purchased this, I purchased it untested without accessories. So I do not intend to start it until it's all cleaned up. Or at least visual inspection done. Three more screws here, and three in the front, and three in the back. Oh, this is actually quite nice that it seems to have the original original feet because those usually disappear very fast so let's get the cover off so that's the my inside yeah a bit crappy but that's expected 30 years of use maybe never open or clean so it's got quite a bit of dust and <laughs> that kind of stuff so let me just um, disconnect the keyboard cable keyboard out and then we find <laughs> more dust so it's always this kind of lint that it's collected in various places. So, so far so good. And we need to take the protective cover off. And there's no scratch mark. You see, if you want to see if the protective cover has been taken off before, then you can actually look for any kind of scratch marks. And that's usually indicated that somebody's been in there. Of course, it's not a guarantee. I think I might refurbish the uh, the tin, and then it has. Maybe 
guys should be wearing gloves. Okay, so are those Torx or no, they look like they're or is it a different size of Torx? Torx. No, I think that's actually a different size of Torx. It's actually their heads are very dirty. So I'm just going to investigate that quickly. It'll be the same size of Torx as we've been using, but the the head is so it's corroded and dirty. So I actually had to work on cleaning these two up a bit. But, um, And then there's these two. Oh, okay. Well, that's that's not in that bad shape, but uh, and that might be all. Dirt. I think there's a bit of rust, so I think I might actually give this a, a reconditioned paint. Let's try retrieve the screws. That's one. of humidity corrosion. Well, but I have three screws. One, two, no, there should be four. So where did the screw go? Ah, found it. Rolled underneath the board. Ooh. So, so far so good. And then we need to take the drive out. And that's just... Um, just and just. But that's interesting. The, the screw is missing there. No screw in there. Oh, but this drive is completely loose. Oh, it's actually screwed through the bottom, so it's got a couple of. Well, actually, this. <laughs> it has no screws. Okay. So, what's the. Oh! Somehow the screws have worked themselves out. And this is just a normal Phillips. Phillips screw. Uh, okay, that's a different model somebody's been playing. Not sure. Uh, it's either. No, that's probably original. It's kind of like a screw post, like uh, with a motherboard. Space. 
this. But I'm going to um, blow it out anyway. Carefully. But it doesn't look that dirty. Aha! Here we have something that needs urgent attention. Better now than never. And that's this is the Omega 500 Plus, so it actually has a battery. And we really need to get that off and out. Let's see if it's corroding already. This is a newer machine, so uh, doesn't look that. It's not exploded. It's not being dumping on acid on the on the board. But I'm going to take that out and put a new one in. It's a re rechargeable um, 3.6 volt battery. You can you can get them relatively cheap. Oh, there is some corrosion. Oh, damn it, uh, yuck. I think there's been some leakage, or it's just general humidity. Let's hope that all cleans up. You see all the, all the signs of corrosion there. So there are some Omega 500s where the multi-layer structure of the board has gotten destroyed. So. But it, it doesn't look like it could be that it's just the humidity because, yeah. But anyway, so now I'm just going to think we can now just a tab that didn't exist then. Omega 500. Standard classic. Let's see now though they changed this mechanism. And that sort of free. Should back out. like I'm doing something wrong. What? Because I can't see what's holding it. Or is it just <laughs> it's just the you know, just the plate that got caught on the edge. On, on this tab. Okay, so oh, it's been out. you can see that it's been having some humidity damage. So, so now we got this out. Uh, it's not nice with so much corrosion. We'll see how it cleans up. get rid of all that corrosion and that it hasn't damaged anything because of course the key issue is that it hasn't destroyed any 
come back to traces or interesting so and then we just now then this is connected to the to this tin it's actually only connected with those two but I usually I screw out all of them and then I put some grease on them just to make sure they're all free Plus, or at least on this version, every one of those screws needs to be disconnected. Okay. It's actually quite short work with that on the socket solution because you can actually get you can get access to most of the most of these screws quite easily. traces that are trashed then that becomes a issue to um then you the most logical thing to do is to get another motherboard and move over the um, chips but we'll see how far we get if it cleans up fine and i um put a new battery in it then it will of course be okay It's good to get underneath to um, see how bad the circuit board, uh, how, what the condition of the circuit board is underneath. I think they've actually had two versions of this tin cut, where, where on some of the versions they've made a cutout. So that you don't have to, you, the only one you need to disconnect is this one. And then you can take it, and then there are others where, where you actually have to do it, like I'm doing now. You have to, have to unscrew everything. Makes the job a bit more. The table's really getting dirty. said retro computing was clean work. <laughs> so now we should be able to yep, take that out. And we see that it's got this plastic insulation protection. And don't see any major corrosion damage on that one at least. Surprise, surprise, what does this look like? Let's see. Quick overview. I can't see any rework, so nobody's been soldering here. I can't see any evidence of the corrosion that's on the other side. Here we have some discoloration. I'm actually more and more convinced that this might be external humidity that's been causing issues. 
But as I said, that it's um get rid of that um, and then um, total cleanup and then um, yeah. whoa what's that that's interesting I think they might have different ROM chip sizes because this here as you see it's not even the length of the, of the socket it's missing one layer level of pins but I think they had a, on the on the 500 plus they had something weird that you could have a higher capacity ROM <laughs> this thing only survived for two years they made this for two years and then kaput it was gone and then it was the, I think it was the Amiga 600 that came and then that was a complete ah, and then it was the end of Commodore so, you know. Okay, so that's that's gonna be a bunch of work. And then we have the keyboard. As we've already seen the that's quite a bit. So I'm actually going to, what I'm going to do is I'm going to um remove all the keycaps offline. I mean not on the video because it's boring to watch. So I'm gonna take all the Remove all the keycaps and the related springs. And then I, and as you see, there's lots of dust in there. And then I'm going to unscrew, take away the controller, and then open the back panel, and then clean the um, membrane lightly and carefully. So that will be. If you want to see how I did the the whole keyboard re. re Restoration. Then you can watch my uh, video series on the Amiga, on the classic Amiga 500. Because there, I actually filmed in in detail how I went through cleaning up all the stuff, and that that's actually yeah, related to other other component cleaning up also. But um, for the Amiga 500 Plus, then I think we um, the next time you see me on this, it'll be the um, yeah, it'll be testing, and then. Um, probably make uh, a reassembly video I think that would be probably. but of course you know put in the comments if you would like to see something specific other than other than that Ugh. dust so anyway that's enough for this video I think so now you see seeing how you break down on the 500 plus also first time for me and um, as I said the next time we'll be trying to see if it actually actually works after it's cleaned up so if you don't want to miss that then hit the bell um, consider subscribing and if you want to finance this kind of stuff then feel free to buy me a cup of coffee there's a patreon also and um, yeah and to try and prevent the um, spread of e-waste so and I mean all these ba oh, it's so sad uh, all these kind of rechargeable small batteries they're, they're, they've been the death of so much electronics and not only computers but it's absolutely but now the more mo when you're looking at more modern stuff then if they need something like a battery like that the, it's not a battery anymore it, quite a lot of equipment is moving, moving to supercapacitors so then they don't have this electrolyte crapping issue so that's actually a good good moving in, um, in the right direction I mean if you look at the corrosion you got it here and here there's, a, there's more here and then it's on the co contact there but I, I, when I look at the battery, I can't see that the battery has been leaking, and it definitely hasn't been changed. Maybe it has been secretly leaking. Oh well, I'm going to remove it anyway, so it doesn't matter. Okay, I'll uh, see you in the next one then.